So I'm putting in another solar panel array. This is up at our cabin. This is actually to run our mini split. I apologize if there's any wind. I don't have my mic with me, so you have to bear with me. But I've got these eight solar panels and you can't really see in the video, but I've got four 14 foot iron ridge rails. And so the panels will mount directly to those rails. And then I've also got 10 foot, three inch galvanized pipe. So the pipe's gonna go in the ground. And then there's a cap that has a U-bolt that goes over the top. And it's gonna have another pipe that goes over it. And then we'll do one row in the front. I'll do another row in the back. The back will be higher than the front. And then these rails will go at about a 45 degree angle. Now the iron ridge is not the cheapest way to go. You can kind of configure it with Home Depot stuff. However, in the past I've seen Home Depot DIY setups fail in high wind. So we're going with the heavy duty setup and it just makes it a lot easier because these solar panels go straight into the rails very easily and then it's rated for high wind, lots of heavy snow, all of that stuff. So we're just getting ready to drive the posts in and I'll just take you along with us and so you can see exactly how this goes. So stick around for this video on how we set up these solar panels to run our mini split heating and AC unit. That was uh, some of the most exciting part. Uh, we actually mismeasured at first and put this pipe in a foot too deep. So what we did is we actually took a ratchet strap and a pallet and ratcheted the strap here around the pole, put the pallet underneath, used another pole, and we pulled it out a foot. You can see the black line right there. So if you go too deep, then you know you can pull it out a little bit doing something like that. It was uh, pretty fun making that work. Uh, one thing that will probably help you if you're going to build something like this with this iron ridge set So I just did a 45 degree angle That's what I've done for my other panels and they've worked wonderfully for over a year now So the easiest way to get that measurement is you measure between the front and rear post Which for us happens to be 54.5 inches And then you measure down 54.5 inches and that's where the top of this is going to be Okay, so this pipe was sitting up here five or six feet or whatever it was. We just measured the distance here, measured down 54 and a half, got a level, put it right here, and that told us exactly what height we needed to cut. We're not on even ground, and so because of that, we have had to use the level. Everything squared up and looking good, and now we take these handy little brackets. See the Iron Ridge brand right here? This is what you basically can't get from Home Depot or anything like that. This is what makes life easy. So this is gonna go right on top of the post, and then we're gonna put another pole right across the top. You bolt it in, and then the rails will go up at an angle that the solar panels sit on. So it'll go just like so, right over the top, cinch that in, pull, and then we go from there. So it, uh, it really does make it easy. This is a lot easier than trying to do it from Home Depot or anything like that but it does cost much more. The thing that made this work 
was this Titan Post Driver. I'll put a link down below. This was not cheap, but this thing makes it so that way we don't have to use an auger, put in concrete, wait a day or anything like that. As you saw in the video earlier, I was hanging off the poles and everything like that. They are rock solid. This model is the PGD, that's Papa Golf Delta 3875. What it has on bottom is a four inch uh, driver. And then it's got these spacers that you put in. And this is the three inch chuck or the three inch spacer for the three inch pipe. And I used this to put in over a hundred eight foot tall U posts. They're like really big T posts that you get from Home Depot. Uh, I got mine from a local place here. Anyway, they're really heavy duty and we had to drive those three feet into the ground along a rocky road. Ooh, rocky road ice cream would hit the spot right now too. <laughs> uh, so anyway, this just, it saves a lot of time, no having to auger, no cement or anything like that. It has just worked wonderfully. It's got a ton of power. There's smaller versions of this that are much lighter. This weighs in about 55 or 60 pounds. So it is very heavy, but it is absolutely worth its weight in gold. This thing is amazing. It makes driving posts so much easier. One thing I will say on this, and I am going to do a full other review just on this, is for some reason the user manual says that you need to take it off choke when you need to run it, but for some reason this will not continue to run unless it's on choke. I don't know if I did something wrong, set it up wrong. And the second thing is this has to be laying down on its back running for a full five minutes before you even start to use it, and it doesn't help to turn it off in between posts or anything like that. Just leave it running. It really has got to be hot and moving. Uh, for it to keep working properly. So don't turn it off between posts or anything, just keep it running. So you can see the top of the post, we've got our cap here, and then the U-bolt goes right over. Just tighten this, this was a 9 16 nut. I just need to take my Allen wrench. This is a 3 16 Allen, and these little bolts already have Loctite on them, and this is all we have to do to get them nice and secure. I think I just did this wrong. There's a little instructions right here that I just noticed. It says for three inch tubing, use calibrated torque wrench. Torque top screw first, then bottom. Repeat until both have the proper torque. Well, I don't have a calibrated torque wrench with me and I didn't start with the top one and I think we're gonna be a-okay. The Loctite is in, it's pretty snug. I'm not over tightening it. That's what I'm gonna go with. So now I'll put the other U-bolt here and then we'll get the top rail done with these caps and U-bolts and then start mounting the rails. So this is called a camo. We could not figure out what it was for. And then we realized we're not supposed to use the UFO bolt. So we're not supposed to use this on the bottom. We thought we were supposed to, but you use this camo piece. And what you're supposed to do, we did it wrong here, but, okay. So you get, there's a nut that slides in that locks into the top of the rail. And then you push this down over the lip. And then I just 
lift and push this piece into the rail. And you hear it click in, and now that is pinching the bottom to hold it in place, and we'll do the same at the top. So the UFO bolts seem to only go in between two different panels, not at the bottom. I can say for sure is this iron ridge system is leaps and bounds easier than a DIY system. So I used a treated lumber system made a four kilowatt array. Uh, I have another video on how I did that. That one was a uh, was I'd say kind of medium difficulty, not not too bad. I've done another one where it was a bunch of DIY figured out pipes and their own brackets from Home Depot. Uh, that was one that actually failed and broke in the wind. It, that one took two days, and so did the other. Uh, lumber one. My father-in-law and I here in five hours have set up this entire system. Once you understand it, it's really easy. The second row of panels went up super easy. So hopefully you found this really helpful. The last step is wiring this and for the mini split air conditioner, it's 100% solar powered. There is no grid power to it. So it only works when it's got solar power going to it and we connect all eight of these panels in series. So I've already connected the top two, so now I'm just gonna go positive, negative, positive, negative, or male, female, male, female, all the way down the sides, and then on the bottom, I'll be left with one negative female, one positive male, stick them in to the main line, and we'll be powering that mini split once again. Male and female. So because I've got male to female all the way through, I can take this cable, which is over 400 feet down to the mini split. And it's just straight connection that makes sense. Male to female, male to female. Now we are running power down to the mini split, cooling down the cabin, because today is a hot day. So there you have it about 2,500 watts total, wired in series. Five hours with two guys and a, a ladder that was way too short. I would recommend at least an eight foot ladder, maybe even a 10. We would have made life a lot easier up in the back, but we got it figured out. I'll probably come through and clean these off uh, that, or I could just wait for it to rain and that'll clean it off. Overall, I'm very satisfied with it. I give the Iron Ridge equipment a big thumbs up. If you want more information about that, I'll put links down below. Just click the show more button. If you found this video helpful, it was a ton of work. None of it's sponsored. I paid for all of this out of my own pocket. So it would really mean a lot if you gave me a thumbs up, even subscribed, leave a comment. All of that helps with the Google algorithm. Even if you just put, you know, good job or nice shirt or I hate your shoes, get better tools, whatever the comment is, just leave it down below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you in the next video. Be prepared.